Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a different video from the ones you have seen recently in that I'm going to review an action camera today. This is the DJI Osmo Action which is nothing new but as I've never really used action cams as a videographer before this is a whole new genre to me. So let me share my experience and my opinion of the DJI Osmo Action with you today. Not sure if any of you has been following my channel closely enough to know about my weekly Ironman 70.3 vlogs, but I started that video series couple of weeks ago to document my preparation for my first ever half Ironman race coming this September. When it all started I soon realized that I would need a camera to make my own life, but more importantly my girlfriend's life much easier by investing in an action camera, which we could use for filming b-roll during my workouts. So after a bit of research I ordered the DJI Osmo Action and started using it two weeks ago, so I still have only a limited experience with it, but so far I have to say I'm impressed with what this little camera has to offer. So let's talk about the DJI Osmo Action a bit. The Osmo Action has the usual action camera form factor, it's small, well built and of course it is waterproof up to 11 meters and it also works in temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius. It weighs only 124 grams without the frame, but you need the frame to mount the camera on anything because it's the frame that has the built-in mount, not the camera itself. The camera uses a 12 megapixel sensor with a maximum resolution of 4000 by 3000 pixels for photos. Maximum video resolution is 4K at 60 frames per second. The maximum bitrate is 100 megabits per second and it records videos in either MOV or MP4 format onto a microSD card up to 256 gigabytes in capacity. The camera has a lens with a field of view of 145 degrees and an aperture of 2.8. The aperture is fixed, therefore ND filters are highly recommended. One of my favorite features of the camera is the dual screens. There is one touch screen on the back and the nine touch screen on the front. That front screen was one of the deciding factors for me to buy this camera instead of the GoPro Hero 8, but more on that in a minute. The front screen is not a touch screen, so you have to switch back and forth between the two screens if you want to change settings in between two shots, unless you use the quick switch button on the side, where you can have your favorite settings saved as presets and go through them quickly and select the one you need without having to touch the screen on the back. Also, you have to press and hold the quick switch button to switch between the two screens while recording. When not recording, you can also switch between the screens by either tapping on the back screen twice or you can simply use voice control and say screen switch, since the Osmo Action have a few basic voice control commands such as start recording, stop recording, take photo, screen switch and shut down. It works well in most cases, but it makes you repeat comments a couple of times when there is too much noise or wind, but it works. Another favorite feature of mine is that the DJI Osmo Action is compatible with the GoPro mounting system, so any old or new GoPro mounts and most accessories will work with the Osmo as well. We happen to have an old GoPro Hero 2 which we bought back in 2012 and maybe used it for filming our holidays in Madeira but nothing else really, and it's been sitting in a bag ever since with all the mounts we bought with it. So we have a suction cup mount, a head strap and a few other mounts we can use with the Osmo, so now I'm grateful for Esther not letting me get rid of all of this garbage before as we saved some money by not having to buy all these. The only mount I had to buy was a cheap bike mount so I could film some of my outdoor bike rides as well. Of course there is still a few things missing such as a helmet mount or a floating grip but we will probably buy these along with the ND filters in the near future if we see that the camera fits in our workflow and it is worth investing more money in the system. But now back to the camera and its features, let's see what it can do in terms of video. As I said the Osmo Action is capable of filming in 4K 60p which is great but you have lots of other options in the menu to choose from. I believe the sweet spot in quality is either 4K 25p or 2.7K 25p unless you need slow motion of course. 
In that case, you can go with 4K in 50 or 60p or choose 1080 with up to 240 frames per second. The footage does not look the best in such high frame rate, but it's fun to play with for sure. Regardless of resolution, you can choose between normal and DCNA-like picture profiles, normal being more saturated and contrasty for those who don't want to color grade their footage, just use it as is. DCNA-like, however, is a more flat profile with less saturation, sharpness and contrast, which gives you more flexibility in post-production, but it requires some work to make it look good. If you are not happy with the dynamic range, which to be honest is not the best I've ever seen, you can shoot in HDR mode to boost the shadows and keep the highlights under control at the same time. Video quality is good in general, especially in daylight, but as soon as it gets dark, or if you want to film inside with limited light, the picture gets noisy and mushy very quick. Not that you would expect anything else from an action camera with such a small sensor. But if there is something you would expect to be very good on an action camera is image stabilization. And the Osmo Action delivers. Rocksteady, as DJI calls it, is available at all resolutions up to 60 FPS even in 4K. It's unavailable at higher frame rates and in 4x3 aspect ratios, which gives you the widest field of view, but unfortunately without image stabilization. HDR mode also disables image stabilization, so you have to keep that in mind. Other than that, Rocksteady works pretty well when walking, running, cycling or driving a car. It made a huge difference in quality compared to when it was switched off. You can see what the footage looks like with and without Rocksteady on. I would recommend leaving it on all the time unless you need a wider field of view. If you look at the footage, you can see that the DJI Osmo action crops in quite a lot with the image stabilization turned on, so you lose the extreme wide angle. Depending on the situation, you might be forced to switch Rocksteady off in order to fit everything in the frame. You can also play with the Devorp option, which allows you to get rid of the wide angle distortion and straighten up the image a bit. I personally like Devorp on all the time, as I'm not a big fan of this fisheye sort of look, but you might prefer leaving it off. The battery lasts about 40 to 55 minutes depending on your settings, so you are better off buying at least one or two spare ones. Oh. Oh. That was bad. Right, really bad. Oh. I only used the built-in mic to record sound a couple of times and it did the job just fine, but you cannot expect much from a tiny microphone built in a tight, sealed body. I wouldn't use the DJI Osmo Action for vlogging as a primary camera with the built-in mic, but you can buy adapters and use external microphones with the Osmo Action so you can upgrade the sound quality if that's what you like to do. To me, it's just a B-roll camera for now and I try to keep the size and weight down by not adding any extra accessories to it. But onto the photos, you have the maximum resolution of 4000 by 3000 pixels. You can choose between shooting JPEG only or JPEG and RAW, which gives you a DNG file to play with in Lightroom or Photoshop if that's your thing. You have auto or manual exposure settings, you can choose to devorp the image the same way as you can with the videos, and of course you can take timed photos as well. Image quality is good enough, especially in RAW, but the auto white balance and exposure works pretty well and you can get great JPEGs out of the camera as well. There is both a time-lapse and a hyperlapse function and you get ready to use videos as a result, so you don't have to edit hundreds or thousands of photos to make a time-lapse or a hyperlapse video, you get it straight out of the camera in either 4K, 2.7K or 1080 resolution. The quality is good, as long as you have enough light, again, in dark the picture gets mushy quite quickly. There is a smartphone app to be used with the DJI Osmo Action called MIMO, which to be honest with you I haven't used much, but you can control the camera and you have all the settings available through the app, and you can also do some editing and even live streaming within the app. I found connecting the Osmo Action with MIMO a little bit too slow, as the app never found the camera automatically and I was lazy to manually connect the two all the time, so I didn't really use the app, but I don't think I ever missed this option while using the Osmo Action. But the app is there and it has some cool features, so it's another box ticked for someone who finds it important. 
What I found important, however, is that I got a camera which is small, easy to carry around, waterproof without a case, does 4K in 50 FPS with image stabilization, has a flat picture profile, a built-in front screen and it's compatible with my old GoPro mounts. The only one thing I'm missing is a built-in mount, something like the GoPro Hero 8 has, so you don't have to have a frame which adds to the size and weight of the camera. But since it's pretty easy to take the camera in and out of the frame, it's not a deal breaker. Also, compared to the GoPro 8, the Osmo Action has a removable lens cover which can come in handy if it breaks and you can simply replace it without having to buy a whole new camera. Again, at the end of the day it was the dual screens which made me buy the Osmo Action instead of the GoPro, but your preferences might be different. All things considered, I believe I'm going to like this little camera and I will find it useful for filming b-roll during my workouts and travels in the future. The DJI Osmo Action met all my expectations and even exceeded them in a few areas such as image stabilization, so I'm very happy to have bought it. If you are looking for an action camera, it is a great choice in my opinion, especially if you get the two extra batteries as part of a good deal as I did. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions about the DJI Osmo Action camera, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.